Please join me in a word of prayer as we're about to open a book of the Bible, King James Version, Romans. I'm just going to do a little jumping from chapter 6 to 7 to 8, real quick. And then, yeah, let's stop at 8. I just want to go over some thoughts with you real quick by the grace of God, okay? And our little friend here is like a lord as well. Lizard here is keeping me company. <laughs> Interesting little character. Thank you so much. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies and your grace. We ask you, Lord, to please help us and guide us. Help our minds and thoughts that may speak only those words that are uplifting and that show that show that we care, that we love, that we mean well. The intentions are well meant, Lord, to save your people. Help us, Lord, to understand and to apply the wisdom that you've given us, you've given us in this time, Lord. Because we need to save as many people by the grace of God, including ourselves. Please help us, Lord. We have a battle ahead of us. And we know that with you at the helm, it'll be just fine. So help us to weather it, Lord. Just may pray. Amen. This is one of the beautiful Bibles we have. It's called the Heritage Edition Bible. A long time ago I had it. I'm just going to read something to you real quick. It's like, I just like to read the Bible. It's just beautiful. I love the messages. And Romans, written by Paul, it's very beautiful. You like the little title on Romans. It says, Romans here, the epistles of Paul the Apostle. Let's say, as early as the, sec as the mid second century AD, the letters addressed a century earlier by the Apostle and occasional associates to specific. So occasional associates to specific situations and churches were collected into a corpus, increasingly known, not a corpse, corpus, I mean, you know, group, increasingly known throughout the expanding Christian world. The context of them is partially provided by the account in Acts, you know, Acts of the Apostles. I just say, whatever you read in the Bible, whether it's all in the Old Testament, New Testament, apply it to ourselves now. Put ourselves in everybody's place and see who God is talking with. It's us he's talking about. All of us are here, okay? The Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Romans. Addressed to congreg congregations yet unvisited, this epistle presents the most systematic statement of the Pauline proclamation. K-E-R-Y-G-M-E. Kerjimer, centering upon the relations of the new Israel to the old. We are new Israel and there's old Israel. Huh? There's something in there. Personal allusions of the final chapter suggest it's been a fragment of an another letter. He, he, wrote, he goes on to do so much work in here. And Paul was not the most wonderful character in the beginning. You know, he was the name of Saul before. So he had a running with God, and then, as you know, God wins. God doesn't lose. And he thought he was doing the right thing for God, full of zeal, but was actually harming and destroying his brothers and sisters and fighting against the cause of God. So we have to do something better, not to do what, not to do what Paul did, okay? Let's learn, I mean, the past, what Saul did. But what Paul did, we should do likewise now. This Paul, okay? Talking about Romans. After the fall, you know, talking about the sins of man, sins of Adam, what Jesus is there for, what is the plan of salvation, and a lot of topics, a lot. I can't even go into all the details right now, but I just want to talk to a couple of things. Make friends like this. It says here, like, look at Romans chapter 5 first, right? 5 verses 17. It says, life through Christ. It says, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, remember from Adam's sin and fall, right? This is how I read and talk. So much you understand what I'm, what I'm thinking. It's, it just comes together. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace, verse 17, right? Of chapter 5 of Romans, New Testament, King James Version. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ, comparing the Adam of the old to new. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation from this fall of the sin of Adam. We all are sentenced to death. We die, right? So that lie Satan told him about, you shall surely die. Satan was a liar. He was deceived, he deceived them. And we're lying, we're dying. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That one he's talking about is Jesus Christ. Not Satan, not the light bearer. Some people think of the, in the Gnostic Gospels. Oh, because he sinned, man got wisdom. No, man got death from sinning, okay? Not wisdom. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So he's doing a contrast. Jesus and Adam. Right? Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. What do you mean by that? What law? God's law. Right? The law is, there has to be a standard. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Meaning that God says, from what I understand, that when you violate the law, we deserve enough death. Every violation of sin is death. But God says, no, he's merciful to us. He gives us grace. God's redemption at Christ's expense. He gives us grace. Because of Jesus' sacrifice and eternal, and eternal sacrifice for us and suffering, that we're not given death as we should have received. But here's something else. If we choose to go to, go to life with unconfessed sins and, and sins that we, we want to harbor and keep with us and refuse to give it over to God, we will be destroyed. 
in the name of Jesus, comes back again. So we need to let it go and give God, give God the glory and, you know, ask forgiveness. 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, that's what sin does, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin which came into under Adam from Satan, tricking him and Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in the Old Testament, now comes Jesus in the New Testament, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the way through, right? But Jesus was also there from the beginning of creation, so let you know that. He actually created everything. So this Jesus you see formed in, in or born in the Gospels, in, doesn't mean that Jesus was not there before. He was always there. You remember what we said before, John 1? Jesus is always there. Let's go to John 1 if you don't want to believe me. That's what he says. It was the Word. Jesus is the Word. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Acts, right? Let's go to John. John chapter 1. This is just going to quick little thing. Then. So people, this is just for us. I know what it is already, but just in case people say, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, you know, it's like Jesus. But I heard he's a conceived, created being. And, you know, and then I think he's only there. And then I think, didn't he have a relationship with Mary? Like, no, 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 no. He came and created a human form to let people see what God is really like. Remember when they asked him, when, when the disciples said, Lord, show us the Father. He said, have you been with me so long? And you're still asking me to show the Father? I am in the Father. And the Father is in me. He's telling me, here. In the beginning, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was, capital Word. Jesus' name is also called the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Jesus is the one make everything. You see how he says? All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. They refuse to see what God is telling them. You know? And it tells you. So Jesus was there since the beginning. All right? Let's go further. Yeah. Let's just continue if you want to believe me more. Come. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, capital L, that all men through him, Jesus, might believe. He was not that light, John, he's talking about John, was not that light, right? But was sent to be a witness of that light. You see how that thing? You gotta read it carefully. That light is saying, so they said, who's John? John is almost referred, John is referred to like the, as they say, Elias, in the, you know, in the New Testament, as well as Elijah of the Old Testament. But John was the one that bear this, this account in his gospel. Jesus, right, was the light he's talking about, the capital light he's talking about, light of the world. Shine it in the darkness to burn away the darkness. Like you turn on and go in the room, turn and switch, put the light on, dispels the darkness. Okay, that was the true light. You know, he said, I don't see the. I don't. When you have a light on, I don't see the darkness being so bright. I mean, so dark that you can actually take away all light from the light source, unless you're going to cover it up and wrap it up and hide it on like a bush like that. You know, hide it on something like this. But otherwise, God's light shines forth. You listening to? Huh? I got two audience members here. All right, do justice. Verse 9. That was the true light, Jesus, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, Jesus, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him. Not. The world didn't know who? Jesus, even though he made them. He came unto his own, Jesus did, as, and his own received them not. Who did who the world didn't receive? Jesus. Who, who, who he created that didn't receive him? Us. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, to, overcome, to become the sons of God. Meaning that because of what Jesus did, we now have powers to become sons and daughters of God. Even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Everything of God. And the word was made flesh. Jesus was made. The word Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Understand? God with us. Emmanuel was made flesh. God, Jesus, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hmm? John be a witness, verse 15, of him, and cried, saying, This is this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. You know, it's beautiful. You know? Now there's John the Baptist, son of Jonathan, John the Baptist, right? And there's also John, John, one of the disciples of John. This is from the disciple of John here, talking about John the Baptist's account. Okay, John the Baptist was six months older. He was six months older than Jesus. Remember from Elizabeth? When Mary made May to visit him. You understand? Yeah? Yeah. All right? So, just want to let you know that part. I am going to go back now to Romans. Romans chapter 5, New Testament, right? What Jesus was saying. Okay? So, because of Jesus... We now have an opening, 
and, uh, and access to God. So here he says, so he says now, people say, okay, well now we, if Jesus is there and, he's, and sin, you know, we can just get over it. He's just, you know, like, mm, listen to it. Yeah, he sounds like gobbler, right? Listen to this. He says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, right, from Adam and Eve. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Right? I mean, when the law entered, it tells you, hey, like a check engine light, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. What? Sin. Sin needs to be checked. Sin needs to be controlled or else you'll be killed. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. What? Sin needs to be checked. Sin needs to be forgiven. Sin needs to be forsaken. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. The law entered. Something is wrong. Law, the law entered the scene. Something is wrong. It tells you what's wrong. Something is wrong. He points out to it. Something is wrong. He tells you, you need to go to God. Something is wrong. He shows you, hey, you sin. Something is wrong. It's like a blinker. It flashes. Something is wrong. It's an indicator. Something is wrong. Hazard. 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 Like a smoke alarm. Do, 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 do. Something is wrong. The law entered to tell you something is wrong. Okay? Something is wrong. We need to address the issue. So God says, okay, I will address it. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might. The offense, offense, the sinful action is an offense to God that might abound. So that we'll see and say, wow, it abound means that God, we'll see that this thing is bad. It's bad to abound means it's bad, it's there. Okay, in the context of how it reads. But where sin abounded, where that sin is there and glaring and something is wrong, something is wrong, something is wrong. Every time in God's face, God says, I will give you grace, I'll forgive you. But you have to claim my grace. You have to ask forgiveness. That as sin had reigned unto death, because if you don't fix that something is wrong issue, it will kill us. It will kill you. It will kill me. We have to fix it. Even so, my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And the sad thing is many people, instead of trying to address and fix the sin issue and address the concern of the blinker, instead of trying to take the, take, maybe change the battery and the smoke alarm, dude, every now and then he goes off the chime, you know. Or the one, you know, now they haven't lost last longer, but you know, like, or fix the fire alarm that's going off. Do, 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 do. Escape, 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 you know, the carbon monoxide alarm. Instead of them trying to fix the carbon monoxide alarm or the fire the fire alarm, they pull the batteries out, they yank it out the wall. They kill the prophets and they kill the people speaking about God. Or they yank them, block them, demonetize, de defame, ugh, shadow ban, whatever, whatever, you up sell, down sell, whatever you do to them. So that they will be able to not be bothered anymore? Seriously? Has this happened? Have people actually tried to shut up the messenger so that they will continue in sin? Oh, like Cain and Abel? Oh, oh, I see. Like, like what they did to Jesus. Best that one man should die and the rest of the nation should perish. Not because their nation was all righteous and good, but they rather kill him. So they killed Jesus, their own. Who they? Us. We're all spiritual Israel. We're all spiritual Jews back and forth. We're all God's children. God came unto his own. He didn't say specify. He came unto his own. That one, the white, the black, the red. He didn't say he came unto the... He didn't specify what he said. He said he came unto his own, but his own received them not. His own, his own creation, his own kind, his own children, his own piece, his own masterpiece of creation. His own... Remember God says, let us make man in our own image in Genesis. Let us go down and make man our own image. He came unto his own. Who should be in his own image? And they rejected him. They killed him. But you can't kill God. So he permitted himself, his life to be taken to be a sacrifice for the sin once and for all for us but he says here because he did it he said we cannot live in sin now we can't just because that he died for us I mean, don't mean we know we have and we have access and grace then we should continue sinning no grace is grace means take time to get it together and get it quick with god before things go bad chapter 6 of romans new testament now he says what shall we say then shall we continue to sin that grace may abound you okay you're on the in this one we have Eugene is here with us. Okay, yeah. He said, "Shall we? Shall we continue to in sin that grace may abound?" God forbid. Means no, you can't do that. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We're not going to live in sin every time. No, we got to stop. Three, verse three. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? I mean that's why that's why we do the acts of the symbolic act of baptism. When we die to that watery grave of baptism, we're saying, Lord, we die to sin as well. We live into you and live eternally, you know? We accept his sacrifice as us. It's a symbolic representation of that. For therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You understand? So if we die as he did by forsaken sin, right? Not to go suicide yourself, but for second sin and giving it to God and asking for forgiveness, and he forgives us, 
we shall then be given a gift of resurrection of eternal life with him. Okay, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That old, wicked, sinful self is crucified with him. That the, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Understand? So when the world says, go do what you want, do what thou wilt, live, go have an, go have an affair, have anything with them. What's the thing? With, what, what's the thing? What's that, what's that website again called? And the other beat up put there? What is that? Um, what's that website called? Where you say, go. Um, the website where it says, um, it was two, two females, Ashley Madison. Go do Ashley Madison and live in sin. No, we're not to do that. Not to do that. Okay? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Yeah, but remember, there's a second death, right? Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We have to read everything in context. Don't stop. Continue. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. You cannot kill Jesus Christ. You ever hear him? The Romans said we killed him. Let's go find him. Huh? Um, somebody's at the door. Do you know her? No. Is she buzzed the bell? She's at the door. You said she, she recognized her? We had, this is an intermission. If you no, if you don't recognize her, don't, want, don't answer the door. Everybody's there trying to sell something. Who knows? Knowing that Christ being raised, I didn't invite anybody over, so I don't know anybody who's coming here, but we'll see that later. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. I mean that yeah, I didn't see, the Romans didn't go try to kill him again. Why? They can kill him. Yes, maybe, maybe, she, maybe she's just giving like a, a gift. Maybe she's doing a tract or something. It's okay. Yeah, don't answer. If you don't know anybody there, keep it closed. It's okay. Thank you, though. Right? Like life, right? That's how, well, Let's use that analogy. There are many people that may come knocking on our door that we may be unfamiliar with. As God says, he's the good shepherd, right? And Jesus says, I knock, and my sheep, my sheep will hear my voice like a shepherd, right? I knock, and if you hear him, if you hear his voice, open up the door. Now, you have to be able to know God's voice to hear him knocking. If you don't know Jesus' voice by his actions or by his character and what you read in his word, how would you know that familiar knock or that sound? We need to know his voice, okay? He's the one that fixed that something is wrong, something is wrong, something. He fixed that issue. But we need to know that voice. We need to recognize him when he comes knocking. How would you recognize Jesus unless you recognize his voice, his words and stuff. He said, the sheep hear my voice. He's the good shepherd. The sheep hear my voice and they follow. Huh? There are, there are a lot of people who are fake shepherds coming in there trying to sell God and trying to tell us about God and trying to use us and abuse us. I just seen the video where people end up missing. I said, be careful of who you choose as a person to come into your home. Be careful of who you choose to have people come into your life. Be careful of who you choose to have come into your, your, your being. Be careful of what you have come into your senses. Because if we're not careful, sin is always knocking, trying to get in. And if we're not careful, we will, have, we will trap, we'll be... You can lose your life. We can lose everything because of sin. So let's not let sin, don't let sin in. Guard the abyss of our minds. We need to guard it. Okay? So he says, verse 8, if, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him because of the gift he gives us of eternal life. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. And many people in, many in life have been told to be afraid of death. If you do this, you'll die. If you do this, you'll die. And that's end up getting themselves sacrificed. They've done it, you know. They've sacrificed other people. To try to offend, try to appease an offended God, supposedly in some cultures and traditions, killing people. How could you give some? How would you kill someone to preserve your own life? What, what kind of thing is that? That's what this what Jesus said. God says you better know the truth because you might kill somebody accidentally or harm somebody, thinking you're going to preserve life. You can't take life to go to preserve life. Jesus' life was given offered freely for us because He said, you know, the penalty for sin is death. He said, I will pay the price myself. Because I love you so much. I'll pay the price. For God so loved the world, right? He gave me that, right? That he gave us only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave us his gift. But he ain't tell us to go suicide ourselves. He doesn't go harm ourselves. We gotta be careful. Please. You know? So he says, continue verse 10. For in that he died, Jesus, he died unto sin once. So when people say, oh, so when they do this, and sorry if anyone's offended by this, but understand the message. So you have to read it in context. When they said, oh, we do the mass. Every time the Catholic people do a mass and some other religions say they, 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 they do a mass every time to show the breaking of bread of Christ and crucifying him. That means every time you do the crucifixion of the mass, you're actually trying to crucify God again and crucify God again and crucify God again. What are you trying to do? Do you remember when Jesus died? How the, the veil in the temple was torn and the lamb that was going to be sacrificed got up and ran away? Right? You cannot kill Jesus twice. No, that sacrifice was paid eternally once and for all. No more of this kind of sacrificial system of having, killing chicken and sheep and goat and bullock and oxen. No more of that stuff is done. No more sacrificing other people to appease some offended God. Jesus is the offering gift 
that appeases God already. He's God. He did it himself. So please, no, don't do that. For that, and he died. He died once. That's it. So no more need to do this continual mass stuff. This mass and sacrificing God and some wafer cookie or some. No, that's anti scripture, anti God. That's not right. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Sin will kill us if we don't get it fixed. That's we got to forsake it. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Only through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not through the Pope, not through any bishop or, or pastor. Only through God can we have life. Only intercessor through God. There's no intercessor. There's no Mary, we love her. Okay, but she's in the grave sleeping. So she's not no mediatrix. She's not no mediator for Christ and God. She's in the grave sleeping. Okay, there's only one person, the man Jesus Christ. The man, and who's also the man, the man God. He's God, Jesus Christ. No one is intercessing for us. 12. So let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So when I said, go ahead, life is a short, have an affair. These people are mad. That's Satan talking to you. Okay? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust of thereof. Okay? Be careful. God says, don't, don't follow sin. Well, I'm just, this is just my, this is my, my character. I just, if I sin, then maybe I'll get rid of it. No, no, you don't indulge sin. You got to fight with it. Fight with it for all your strength every day. You got to fight with it. Till God says enough, he'll help you. Okay? Neither, 13, neither yield your members as instruments. Oh, this is important. Neither, verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Some people say, well, I'm not sinning, but I'm going to bring my friend to go meet up with another friend to go sleep around and mess around. I'm going to bring this girl to go do this and such and such. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lend people my home to go do such and such. No, you then become an instrument of sin. I'm going to drive the getaway car, but I'm not robbing the bank. I'm not robbing the bank, but I'm, I'm going to drive the people away who rob the bank. No, that's an instrument of sin. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not taking the people's houses, but I'm just going to sign the documents that allow you to take the houses. You see, like, the, like, when, like when Paul asked, Saul asked for the letters to, to go to Damascus to round up the Jews and to round them up and round up the Christians, those following Jesus. And they said, okay, we ain't do it ourselves. Like when the people got, you said people, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes and the Pharisees got the Romans to go carry out the deed of killing Jesus crucifying him we didn't do that well what god says they lent their instrument their voice their touch their, their, their talk their touch their actions they lent their car their home remember I told you apply then to now we are the same people back then if you're doing anything in your life that would en enable someone to sin whether in music or video or performance or action or deed or lyrics or your touch or your actions or your stuff, if you mislead someone into sin, if you trick someone into sin, if you do something, you are just as guilty. You are lending yourself as an instrument to sin. If you entice other people, showing them something they shouldn't watch, showing children things they shouldn't watch, and showing adults they shouldn't, things they shouldn't watch, or entice them to make them sin, you are lending yourself as instruments of sin. You will be destroyed. You will be held accountable. I will be held accountable if I lend myself to be instruments of sin. So I'm trying to say, I'm going to lend you an instrument of, of going to righteousness. I want to help you to get righteous if you are not. And if you are, stay righteous for God only. We're not to lend anything. We're not to do anything to make our brothers to fall. We have to be very careful. So he says, neither yield ye your members. Don't give anything to make anything to make anybody fall in sin. As instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the, from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now here's something interesting. I always hear them say, you see, that means the law is done away with. That means the law is done away with. Then you call God a liar that way. Why? When God said to Matthew, think that I have not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. What he's talking about here is different. Let's read, let's read, I'll tell you why. Let's read the context. Let's read the context. This is what he says here. So he says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Okay, I don't want to have dominion. I want sin to have dominion over me. For ye are not under the law. What do you mean? What, what law? What law? Under the weight of that law. What's the law? The law that says the punishment of sin is death. Are you not under the weight of the law anymore? What, what do you mean? The, the weight of the law, which is death. Because remember, if there's a law that says you cannot park here, but you park there and you get a ticket, that means there's a weight. If you say, thou shalt not kill, but you kill someone and you get death sentence, you get thing. That's the weight of the law. If the law has no back and no power behind it, there's not a law. Don't steal. Don't waste a gun. Don't shoot, try to shoot the police. You might get shot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, there's a penalty for these things. This is saying the weight of the law of God, which says that the penalty for sin is death. You're not under that because of claiming Jesus and forgiveness for your sins or actions. We're not under that law, that weight of sin, the weight of the, of the judgment, of the penalty for that sin. By claiming Jesus is Christ. Jesus is Christ. Jesus is offering as the Christ, our Messiah. Okay? 
But he didn't say he's, he's not under God's holy Ten Commandment law. Be careful how you read that. For you're not under the law, but under grace. I'm under God's redemption at Christ's expense. God's redemption at Christ, Christ's expense. God's redemption at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C. I heard that from Pastor McFall. God's redemption at Christ's expense. God redeems us from sin. God saves us from sin. God gives us grace and mercy, right? And mercy rejoices against penalty, right? God, God saves us from that, right? But 